What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Amalgam Show. I'm one of your hosts, Keena Johnson, alongside Kyron Johnston. Hey, what's up? Shannon Hagler. Hello. And Nathaniel Redden. There were new, two new COVID cases in Queensland today. Were there? <laughs> like actual ones or not just yeah. like the last one? Because there was one a couple of days ago, but it was like on a boat, like a kilometer offshore. Oh, just in Queensland waters. Yeah. Two in Brisbane, apparently, but we don't know. Like, I didn't listen to where, where they were exactly or what happened or if they came they, from us. Or... Yeah, because there, there was one on a cargo ship from like Malaysia. And they <laughs> caught it and tested and found, and then they put the person back on the boat, and the boat is like kilometers offshore. But because it was found at the Queensland port, it was technically a case in Queensland. Uh, well, so long as they stay 1.5 meters away from me, I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, they're social distance from land, so they shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that still didn't stop like other countries from getting it, so. Didn't stop us from getting it. That's what I mean, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Nathaniel, what's the Amalgam show about? Stuff. (laughs) (laughs) You forgot. Gaming and pop culture and things we care about. Correct. Theories, but I'm going to do it this time. I was going to get some rum, but not now, I guess. I was was thinking about getting pizza and eating it on this podcast. So was I. I, clean, I cleaned up way too much of a bottle of wine last time, so I decided not to do that this time. <laughs> I got to the end of the recording and was like, oh, God, that's bad. Uh, if you enjoy what you're about to watch, please click that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, because uh, we're slowly pumping out more content. So, like, got to, I guess, oil the... What are we, your oil? Wheels? Gears? Um, gears? Just I was going to say grind the gears, but that doesn't work. Oil oil. That's bad for them. Oh, God, no. That's our OnlyFans <laughs> channel. You can oil, oil me. <laughs> if you have any questions, oh, um, it would make oh, sense oh, why oh, you oh. would, please comment mm. below. Uh, or That's email us so at the Margin Show at gmail.com. Joy uh, Mile. Joy Mile. Joy Mile. So because I'm wearing these headphones, I can't actually hear myself that well, so it sounds like I'm underwater. Oh. oh, wow. Yeah. Like, usually they have, like, a hear-through function, but I can't do it on my computer, which sucks. Uh, so that's why I have to, like, think real hard about talking. <laughs> I'm shifting into talking I mode. I about talking when I can hear myself. <laughs> <sighs> um, and then check us out on social media at The Amalgam Show everywhere except uh, the ATO. Um, <laughs> do your taxes. We don't pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an underground that. operation. <laughs> uh, Care of the Amalgam Corporation, which is in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> in case anyone's wondering. Uh, so, what did y'all think of that uh, Halo Infinite trailer? It's another Halo they're... game. It looked all right. It's um, open world now, so it, the the map reminded me of um, is it is the is the map Valhalla on Halo Three? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. There's it, it looks like but, Forge Valhalla. Yeah, yeah. All but those ones. I did notice that it looked like it was a free roam game, and that you had to go take down different things. Yeah, it looked like one of those games. It looked like they're gonna they're gonna make the pitch that's been made since Skyrim of like, see that point on the Halo? You can walk there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that seems cool. That's a cool idea. Um. It looked like there were side quests and things that you could do other than just walk through this series of corridors and shoot shit. Mm. Um. Master Chief has a grappling hook. Which now makes it very uh, Doom Eternal. It makes it very Just Cause. It makes yeah, it very, yeah. It makes it very video game, like, from about four, three, well, five, three or four years ago. Yeah. Because grappling hooks were super in. They're back. Um, Ghost of Tsushima yeah. and Doom Eternal this year. And now Halo. It, it, looked, it looked clean. It looked really clean. Yeah. Um, I will say that. It looked really like a really, really well-structured game. Um supposedly 1080p 60 frame 
games. I'm mm. just waiting for them to to drop their battle royale mode because that's definitely going to be in. There. Yeah, um, that'll be. It might not. Oh, that'll be this time next it, year, I bet. Yeah, it might not be the central focus of the multiplayer, but they'll have a you know hundred Spartans drop out of a pelican mode. Yeah, mm. and I will play the shit out of that. Halo War Z. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh god yeah no they'll they'll do that or a hundred covenant drop out of a i don't know banshee I don't... yeah you, you um, can maybe pick a squad or something like that and be like ah oh, i'm a covenant i'm a yeah a, a, a spartan and I'm then a, there, there was also the the other race they added in um in four oh. the prometheans or whatever the, it's all yeah the prometheans. <laughs> honestly like if you, if you in case you can't tell i'm not the biggest halo fan um, no I just like I played one, two, and part of three, um, and have zero idea of where the lore has gone since then. So. Same. The only played... Halo I've really ever played was three multiplayer and um, Combat Evolved on the school computers. <laughs> pretty much what everyone says. Yeah, yeah. three is the one that everyone's played. Mm. I played fun. one, part of two, all of four, and that's it. Mm. I remember a couple of years back, I got like. I got like a bee in my bonnet about it. I was like, I'm going to play all the Halo games. I'm a gamer, right? My capital yeah. G gamer. I need yeah. to have played Halo. Um, and so I tried to play them all. And I did play through one and two, like pretty quickly in succession. And then straight away started at three and then was talking to a friend of mine about it. Um, and basically said like, I can see why people were pissed at Halo 2. Because the way oh, that yeah. thing ends is like a fucking, it's, a, it's the worst cliffhanger. And it is legitimately in the middle of the story. Um... But then, you know, I played three and was like, oh, this is all right, I guess, but didn't really care for it. So it just kind of stopped. That's fair. Which is a shame because I wanted to get up to Halo 4 and 5, but. Ugh. I never played Halo 4 and 5. I started um, 5 and then I was like, because the whole reason was downloaded it, came with my Xbox, it was before Games Pass, um, and I was really excited. To play split screen multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> Suck shit. They did not have it, and I was no. very upset. Did they end up patching that in? No, no. It, it, it's designed to not do that. Um, because everyone, the whole thing at that point was no, no, no. We need high res. We need high res, high graphics. frame rate. And if they um, cut it, yeah. well, if they did split screen, you have to cut it in half. Yeah, yeah. So they I essentially go back to sixty frame or thirty frames per second, which yes. is three. Yeah, so they <laughs> they basically had to admit that the Xbox One wasn't powerful enough because they they eventually had to explain it because they had to dumb it down for people of like, hey, if you've got split screen, you are rendering the same game twice, mm. and the Xbox can't do that um, as it stands at 1080p 60. In order to do that, we'd have to cut the frame rate in half, and they didn't want to cut the frame rate. In half. So they just opted to remove split screen from the game and keep the the frame rate at 60 and the, the resolution at 1080p. That seems like something that might be fixed next generation with the SSD, yes. because there's those couple of games. Um, I forget the one during the Xbox conference, but it's that horror game that has the two two worlds loaded in at once, and you just uh, switch the them. medium. Yes, that's it. The medium. And then you also yeah. got. Ratchet Clank Rift Apart, which is just instantaneous uh, yeah, world yeah. shifting. And they even showed Ori and the Will of the Wisp running at 120 frames. Like, it's a yeah. thing that they'll be able to... Like, split screen, I think, will be coming to Halo. In. Yeah. I'm not even just talking about Halo. Like, just in general, like, we'll probably see a surge in, like, more high-class uh, split screen experiences because there haven't been any since probably Halo 4. I hope so. Yeah. I think split screen kind of died. Lines. Split screen died. Everybody has I, their own shit now. Yeah. But like, I think like Borderlands killed all... What? Borderlands three, I think, does have it. You died, Karen. Yeah, Karen's dead. Oh, he is dead. Oh, <laughs> rip. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. You okay there, buddy? You okay there? I don't you know how to right? fix it. <laughs> ah. Um. While he's recovering, spawning, I guess, recovering. Um, I think split screen died when couch co op became the thing. Yeah. Um, everyone wanted to sit on a couch together with people and play instead of playing against each other. So you get things like Towerfall and 
uh, Jackbox oh, Party Pack, and okay, things yeah. like that, where it's it's all it's it's a cooperative, you know, overcooked stuff like that. So yeah, yeah that's kind of where things go. Um, but no, that I'm not. I'm I'm more keen for Fable than I am for Halo. The only thing, though, I saw that trailer and it made me super excited. Don't get me wrong. They didn't show anything. Oh, fuck no. No, they, they, they did the Elder Scrolls 6 thing where they were like, here's a title card. Bye. Yeah. That was it. Although, it's oh, more man. than we've had in the past, what, six, seven, eight years? Mm. Mm-hmm. How long has it been since Fable 3? I oh, know, don't count Fable Heroes or The Journey because... <laughs> no, no, Fable no. 3, I believe, <laughs> is a 2012 release. I think it's been eight no. years. No, oh. Fable, what? Fable 3 is like 2010, I believe. Really? Yep. 26th oh, of cool. October, Jesus. 2010. 2010? Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. It's been a decade. Oh, yeah. yeah, with no fable. Could you imagine? 2010, 2010, 2010. Could you imagine if they had released Super Mario Galaxy and then not released anything Mario until this year? I mean, Metroid's kind of done that, but yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, but that. Metroid's are totally... Like, I'm talking about yeah. like something that was such a mainstay of You're right, the yeah. current time. Yeah, well, like, yeah Fable, Fable was. Yeah. Fable was the RPG of Microsoft. Fable was the thing that I thought that, like, oh, surely they'll make a Fable game for the Xbox One. Like, a proper one. Yeah, surely I this thought, will be... Yeah. Yeah, you know, I thought, I thought it was thought a no-brainer too. slam dunk. But nothing. Nothing. We got a Crash Bandicoot game. I think that's why they're trying we so hard. Spyro to remake. Play. I feel like they have the potential. They have one last chance now to be better than PlayStation. It's going to be hard. <laughs> it's going to be really hard. They've got a, they've they got have, a mountain to climb. Yeah, they've yeah. got a chance. They are bringing back old titles. If they do it right, and they don't just immediately put them on Games Pass, which I'm pretty sure they're going to. They, they already have. They already said that. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, every every game that was seen in that presentation will be available on Games Pass Day One, including Halo Infinite. Well, I mean, like, yeah, and if, Fable, if, it, if it's not on, if it's not on PlayStation, I mean, like, they still got a chance. Yeah, yeah, and and they're still gonna be hyped for it. I mean, I was super hyped for um, Outer Worlds. Mm. I yeah, Games Pass. I think I mean, the Games Pass thing is good. Crackdown yeah. Three. I wanted it to be good so bad that I convinced myself it was good. <laughs> yeah. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. I mean, I didn't convince myself it was good. I just stuck with that trash. I was like, I want to see how it ends. <laughs> didn't convince myself it was good. Just, <laughs> didn't convince myself it was good. Just accepted this was it. <laughs> oh, well, that's... Yeah, they, they should have had more Terry Crews in it. Like they said that they were going to. <laughs> I don't they think that's the, the problem with that environment, <laughs> like they said they were gonna. Yeah, they were gonna do a lot of stuff. Yeah, I remember, remember cloud-based rendering. Yeah. <laughs> Round two, let's go. Project <laughs> cloud. Yeah. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, but it even was... that, that conference was like. It was all right. Like I enjoy their like indie stuff, but like someone pointed out, like like PlayStation's indies were better. Like with Bug Snacks and um, Bug Snacks, fucking Bug Snacks. They released a single finally. Oh really? Yeah, it's on Spotify. It's great. Bug Snacks. (laughs) Um, Um, and like all the other PlayStation indies, they were like good. Whereas these ones were like ah, like they now oh oh, what was it? The Gunk. I'm like the Gunk is pretty good. (laughs) The Gunk is pretty good. Um. Kyron's dead again. <laughs> oh, I just thought he was oh. just pained by the whole thing. <laughs> no, no, he's dead again. I don't know what the problem is. Apparently, it's um, his internet. But yeah. Oh. Um, um, but I was I gonna think... say, uh, I was, I was really intrigued by Everwild. Um, they announced that last know. year. I, yeah, but I don't know if I'd, I'd missed it last year or just forgotten about it. But what they oh, showed God. this, this time, looked all right. Yeah, I'd like to see gameplay. That was probably my other criticism about this, is that, like, the bugger all gameplay. And, oh, like... yeah, this... But if you go back and you watch the 2013 E3... Um, For Xbox? Yeah, 2013 E3. For any like any 2013 okay. E3 presentation, go watch any of them, because yep. that was the year that the PS4 and Xbox One were releasing. 
Yeah. Um, that year, there was a lot of, we're making a game. Here's the name. Here's some concept art. Bye. And that was it. Yeah. Um, and that just tends to be how it works out in the lead up to a console run. You get a lot of things like, we're making this, we're making this, we're making this. You're not going to see it till the console comes out. And even then, it's probably going to be 12 months after that. So, like, it, it's this weird sort of... Because they don't want to release stuff on the old hardware because that's the old hardware. Yeah. But that's the stuff with the install base. So you're wanting to... It, it's, it's a really weird thing. This is just what happens in this time of... Transition. Of, a, of a cycle. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with no gameplay as long as... As long as these things come out. Like, as long as Fable doesn't turn into scale-bound, I'm okay. Yeah. Am I back yet for you guys? Yeah, I gave you a thumbs up. Yeah, even up. back for a bit. Are you uh, doing a thing with the head? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. The other game yeah. that... Uh, the if other I game that Fable looks... Fable Royale, I'm going to end it. <laughs> I don't yeah, think there'll be any Fable Heroes yeah. or something with that. I'm, I, I'm I don't done. think you're in any danger. I, it it looks like that they're going to try to just remodel Fable. It's not going to be Fable 4 or anything. Because it's just called Fable. Yeah. 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 Also, far. I mean, they might give it a subtitle or something. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I think what, I think what you're probably going to get is not just like a remake of Fable, like a reimagine. Like it's gonna have the Fable yeah. name, but it might be an entirely new thing. Yeah. It'd be interesting if they did um a prequel to one, where the, the guild was all still there. I think they're just gonna set it into a completely different place. You reckon? Yeah. yeah. It like, might why, not even be Albion. Yeah. Why tie yourself to that? when you could just go, this is a different thing, it's the same universe, but a different continent or something or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, do the Elder Scrolls thing of, like, here's a different part of the it same... It's like they're going to do more magical creatures and stuff, which is really yeah. good, because they had a heap of magical creatures in the first one. And then the second and third one, there was, like, fuck all. It was like, oh, ah, man, man. <laughs> well, it's because they were pushing... It's because they were pushing it closer to, like, you know, they were pushing it forward in time. So yeah. they had to be like, well, you can't really have a bunch of werewolves and guns... You know, you've got to, at some point, you've got to kind of... Oh, that was still a shit ton of Balverine. <laughs> yeah, but like at some point, the, the, amount of, the amount of magical creatures you have sort of has to diminish as man develops more technology. Yeah. Um, so... The Order 1886 begs to differ. <laughs> the Order 1886 can go suck a dick. Like, who cares? <laughs> no, one, no one brings up that game except the developers of Order 1886. I don't what think they do anything. <laughs> It's just like 2014 PlayStation 4 game. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Um, what is the order 1886? <laughs> it was made by the people who did the PSP God of War games, which those are good games, but then they tried to make like then first like new IP and oh. stuff, and it just didn't didn't hit. And like and then Facebook bought them because they're just super into VR now. It's a very pretty game, like a very yeah. pretty game. It was an entire game done, you know, with like the the movie style, like you know the black bars that go across the top and bottom of your screen. Yeah. To make the whole thing like sixteen by nine. No. Um, very pretty, very cinematic, um, and and high fidelity on all of the the detail. Like oh, so it was just pretty trash. It was a showpiece for the PS4. Like it shows when you take that hardware and you push it to its limits, you can make some really fucking pretty shit. But mm. the game's like five hours long, apparently. Oh. Uh -huh. Like it was really short. Um, and not much happened. Oh, uh, okay. I was like, oh, this is great. It's like, it was like a really pretty, really expensive tech demo. Yeah, like Why Son of Rome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was trash. I played that. It was very much in the vein of that. I'm like, man, this looks good, but boy. The thing that made Order 1886 worse was that it came out a year after the launch. Yeah. So you couldn't even call it a launch title where it's like, oh, here's an experimental thing. It was like, no, you already, you had the time. You could have just made this a half-decent game, but you didn't. Right. Yeah. Are any of you going to get a Series X? Not at launch. Oh, eventually. I'm not going to get anything at launch. I think I'll wait until, like, I'll do what I did this time around, wait until there's games on there that I want to play, and then I'll get it. Yeah. I will right. be getting a PS5 at one. Me too. Like that's If I can physically get one, because the other thing is like supply is gonna be limited. Yeah. But if Depending I depending on how happy the bank is, I'll get a PS5 on launch. Yeah. At, at as soon as I have the ability to order one I will, because so far 
there are enough games that will be coming to the PS5 within the first 12 months or will already be on PS5 that I want to play. Yeah. Uh, so I'm already sold on that thing. I think it just looks cool and I want it. So, yeah. I've been trying really hard, like, how to configure my, like, cabinet so I can actually have the vertical consoles there. Because all my, like, little slots are all horizontal. I'm like, hmm, I don't want this. But, like, I have no room. Like, between my Switch dock and my soundbar and my PSVR holder, there's just no room left. I'm like, I need something else. But nothing else works. It feels like the console manufacturers got together and said, you know how every entertainment unit in the world has horizontal slats? How do we fuck with everyone? (laughs) So that that is the most annoying thing in the world. Because the Xbox Series X stands upright. It's a tall Mom rectangle. Was. Yeah, it's The PS5 like PC has power. those like corners that make you want it to stand upright. The Switch fits in no <laughs> entertainment system because of the way it's designed. Like, what the... F- they all just went, nah, fuck you and fuck <laughs> all of this thing that we've been doing for the last 10 years. Fuck this standard we've built of the box in the hole. Nah, nah, fuck it. Mine all fits. I would still be able to fit it all if I got the other two. <laughs> but would you be able to do it horizontally? That is the question. Yeah. I'll put. I'd put the. Um, if I got the Series X and the PS5, I'd just put them on the top. Next. Oh uh, yeah. Ooh, I'd I'd have to see that because. I- from what I've seen so far of renders those things, those things are quite thick too. Yeah. Like you might actually end up blocking part of your TV if you were to put them there. Yeah. Hmm. Like I know where I my, my PS5 is going to go. It's basically going to take the spot of my PS4 because I'm waiting and this is, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction. <laughs> Making Ooh. a prediction. Mm-hmm. Ma- so there's been a lot of chatter about how quiet PlayStation has been about their price. Yeah, obviously an Xbox as well. No one knows what the price of these things are. No one knows where they're going to come out. The head of PlayStation at the moment, Jim Ryan, I believe it is, yep. over in Europe, has been doing a bunch of interviews, and he keeps harping on... Um, when they ask him about the price, he keeps harping about, we want to make it competitive and fair, but we want to make it a good value proposition. That's the phrase he keeps using, value. Not not cheap, good value. Yeah. I think we will get... I think the rumours of the backwards compatibility are true mm. because I think he's gonna they're going to try and pitch it as five consoles in one. And that's what Xbox so, is doing. Like, yes, they're doing four. and so when the price point is, I'm going to guess 650 Australian, oh. it feels less of a sting. Yeah. I'm only saying 650 Australian because that's the that was the launch price of the Xbox One X, and I think that's the limit of what you can do in Australia in this day, um, which I think will put it at 499 US or something like that. That's what I'm thinking. It'll be it'll be yeah 500 US. I've been mm. my gut's been on like 700 Australian, mm. but the PS3 was 600 American, a thousand Australian. Yeah, but that's again, that's like that's twenty ten dollars, and things have changed, and yeah. yeah, it's it's a weird thing to try and calculate. All I know is that the four ninety nine price point for the Xbox One X ended up with a six fifty launch price here in Australia, and that yeah. was only a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, six fifty seven hundred. That seems like it, but the way they're going, I think the way they're going to pitch it is all your PlayStation games work on this thing, so it's not just one console; it's five consoles in one. And if that's the case, then I will be putting my PS5 directly where my PS4 is because that thing yeah. is going straight to whatever place will think, take it for some cash. I think you're yeah. right, Shannon, because if they go too far over a grand, then people are going to start going, especially so if they're trying to make it competitive with Xbox, Xbox is definitely not going to go over a grand because as soon as you go on over a grand and you're talking about Xbox, you may as well just like start looking into buying a PC. Yeah, because yeah. the yeah. game will yeah. come out, it has game yes. part now, and if they're going to try to compete with Xbox, if Xbox is going to have theirs that low, then they, it's going to need to be around that price. Yeah, you're 100% right. You're 100%. And I think that gives them room to move as well. 650, 700 on the disc version of the PlayStation yeah, sits it in a position where you can cut $100 off the price. It's 550 for the for the digital only. But that feels a little bit more reasonable to the average person. Like five fifty yeah. for a brand new game console? Ooh. 
And that's what the and, PS4 launched at. Yeah, and, but, and that will push people to um, to the digital version, which is what they want. They want people to be buying the digital version, to buy the games digitally, to remove the physical retail space entirely from the equation. Um, and here in Australia, that decision is going to be a little bit... It's going to be made for you, basically. Um, whether you have the internet capabilities or not is, is what's going to di- dictate whether you get the $100 extra version or not. Because it's got to be at least a hundred dollar price difference between the two. Anything less than that doesn't feel worth it. Yeah. So wait, are like, they charging more for the one with the disc or without the disc? I got a bit lost. They would there. charge more with the disc. I would assume more with the disc because it's an extra yeah. piece. But the funny mm. thing is, like, a disc drive doesn't cost a hundred dollars. No, no. A Blu-ray yeah. drive doesn't cost a hundred dollars. So they're going to cut more than what the disc drive is worth to get you to go towards it. But anything less than a hundred dollar cut, like if it was fifty bucks difference, I'd be like, well, why don't I just pay the extra fifty bucks? Then I've got all my discs too. Like it exactly. doesn't seem like a loss. So yeah, man, new consoles are weird. They're super weird. Uh, plus, there's rumors about like um the expandable storage on the Xbox Series X is gonna be fucking expensive, apparently. That's pretty much confirmed. Yeah. Like it's proprietary. Like it's pretty much like the old yeah. 360 memory cards. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Um, every time I feel I like every time Xbox does something, I feel like guys, we already we already solved this. Like when yeah. they keep putting double A batteries in their goddamn controllers, yeah. And I'm like, guys, guys, we fixed this. We fixed yeah. this a decade ago. Nintendo I didn't keep doing this. It has got that sorted, and they have like yeah. one of the longest lasting battery uh, controllers ever. Like, do we know? Do we know if the the new controllers for the Series X have double A's again? It does. God. They look, they look the same as the Xbox One. Is there any they're, difference? They're, they're like, slightly smaller, I believe. The D-pad is the one from the Pro, uh, the Elite controller. It has a share button on it, and yeah, that's it. And I believe they are slightly smaller. Like they've been they've been redesigned like ever so slightly to make the ergonomics better. Because that was actually one of my complaints. I actually don't like the Xbox One X like Xbox One it's controller. It's my favorite because it, it makes me feel like I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, I don't it, like it. It feels it's too like its, its wings are too far out. In all oh, honesty, yeah. I, my favorite all-in-one controller is the Xbox One controller. It's so comfy in my hands. But then my favorite controller overall has got to be the Joy Cons because I can do this. Oh yeah, Joy Cons. <laughs> yeah. I played I played so many hours of Breath of the Wild like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just get end me up playing all my no. games behind my head, so I'll just end up like sitting back like this and just playing. Yeah, again. the idea of having half the controller in each hand is a fucking mind blow. Like, why didn't we come up with this earlier? <laughs> Sony still lazy. has that pattern. <laughs> oh. Sony, they can really, like like take them apart and they become uh, move controllers, which is essentially a yeah, joke. exactly. So, hey. God, it was so good. It was so good. So the dual sense could have been that, but Sony is cowards. I think the DualSense looks cool. I like the Ah. DualSense, yeah. Give me a fucking dinner, fuck you! (laughs) (laughs) But yeah. Um, Yeah, I think the DualSense looks cool. I think the new Xbox controller looks fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's too hot for you, baby. Is it too hot? It's fucking spicy! Oh Oh my god, you little bitch. One chili flake in it. Yeah. (laughs) What is it? <laughs> you stuck around to see what my reaction was. That's how spicy it is. <laughs> oh, oh god. Or did him so <laughs> no. uh, Alright. Right, have we done the what have we been into yet? No. Oh, no. Cool. I just wanted to talk about that. Talking about the start of next generation, let's talk about the end of this generation with Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, that's what I've been into. So yeah, we're gonna get same. get rid of mine real quick. Yeah, and nope. then yeah, it's a good game. It is a really good Assassin's Creed game. It's a it fantastic is. Assassin's Creed game. It's the it most is, stylish Assassin's Creed game. It is. You know how everyone's been wanting an Assassin's Creed game set in Japan for so long? Sucker Punch beat them to it. Like Assassin's Creed can't do it now. If they do it, it will be compared to this, and it will not be as good. Because they've just leaned into every samurai movie that has ever been made. They've made it as corny and as cheesy and as out there as they possibly can. Um, the combat's really good. 
really good for what I expected it to be. Um, and it's a better stealth game than any of the recent Assassin's Creed games. Like, I enjoy the stealth in this game. I hate the stealth in, in the current Assassin's Creed. Because I okay. feel like there's no point to it. Yeah, that's fair. My yeah. favorite thing to do in this particular game is to spend enough time around a bandit camp, murdering the guys in the towers and around the edges of it, so that there's most of them dead, and then walking into the camp and saying, fight me! <laughs> and then having the rest of them come up to you and you just one-shotting all of these motherfuckers. Ah, oh, the standoff <laughs> mode is incredible. It's so good. It's so good! So, so do you guys know much about the game? I, I've only seen one clip, and that was, can you defeat the guy at the start? And no, you can't. No, no, you cannot. No. <laughs> um, so I've seen a little bit about it. I saw it was one of those clickbait videos where it was like, oh, real swordsmen, look at the, the combat in Ghost uh, of okay. Tsushima. Hmm. And they were like, yeah, pretty accurate. I mean, it's a video game, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've seen some stuff. Yeah. Cool. There, yeah, my, not my two favorite things about this game are the standoff mode, which is if you've ever played a Far Cry or an Assassin's Creed or anything like that, when you come across a camp and a place that you're supposed to like assassinate everyone and take it over, one of your options is that you don't actually have to assassinate everyone. You can just walk through the front gate of the place and challenge them and just be like, come here, I'm ready, are you ready? And then one of the dudes will come up and stand on to you one-on-one. -on -one. And there's a little mini game that happens where you basically hold down a button and at, you basically have to time it with when he makes attack. So when he moves, you let go of the button. And if you do it in the right timing, you kill him in one stroke. And you can upgrade this ability. So I believe by the end of the game, you can do it five times. So you no, kill no, one guy... No, there, there are other secret abilities that add more to it. I believe you can get up to five. Yeah. So uh, three in... Abilities. <laughs> yeah, three in the tree, and then I believe there's a charm and then one other thing you can get okay. that can get you up to five. Shit. So you kill the first dude, and then four of his mates come at you one by one, and it's the same thing. You just hit the button as they attack, and you are literally just one shot killing these guys. It's the best. <laughs> It's the coolest thing of you just standing there and just laying waste to these guys in one single stroke, each person just done. That, yeah. it's amazing. My other favourite thing about the game is there's no healing item. You just have what's called resolve. It's great. And you hit the button and he just goes, Ugh! and then he's healed. Yeah. <laughs> it basically he psyching himself back and up. Just and just beats like, himself. Yeah. Yeah, he goes full Kylo Ren, just like... Ugh! Yeah, you're and right, then he, yeah. And then his health bar goes up, and you're like, okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> like Star Wars Online, fucking... If you're a Sith, your healing ability is Seath, and you just sit down and, like, look angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just... It was just the... I was like, oh, I heard that there was no healing items, and I was like, oh, that'll be interesting. And then I saw the thing, and I was like, this is fucking stupid, and I love it. It's so, so dumb. Um... <laughs> The thing about this game that is the biggest selling point, though, is how pretty it is. It's gorgeous. It looks mm. so good. Even on my me, base PS4, it looks stunning. Specifically for me, it's how stylish it is. Like, it is... Yeah. It is... Every Japanese, like, um, samurai movie slash TV show to a T. Like, it is... It's... It's set during winter or fall, I believe. So there's just falling petals everywhere. Then, like, um, and instead of like a waypoint, like you can still set a waypoint, but your guiding track isn't like this arrow <sighs> on your map or whatever. You just flick up on the touchpad, and then the wind yes. guides you. And yeah, you just, oh, like follow the wind. It's so good. That was my um, favorite. Another one, one of my favorite things is that of just like the wind blows in the trees, and you see the direction of the wind. You're like, oh, okay, that way. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, come. How? How, who, how was that so good and never been done before? Right? Like, mm. like and it's stuff like, like going up to the, um, like the NPCs, like it's kind of Witcher-esque in terms of you talk to people and then the quests start propagating that way. It's not as good as the Witcher because I think that's still like god tier levels, but like it's emulating it and it's good at it. But, um, yeah, so you get, like, these quests that just pop up. You have, like, the other really cool part is you go after these legendary samurai weapons and or armor, 
and they do the sucker punch thing. They do the comic book thing, but it's all in Japanese, um, not water paint, but it's in Japanese paint. Watercolors, yeah, yeah. Is, it is yeah, watercolor. So cool, crap. Yeah, yeah, it's like those. Yeah, that, that watercolor. Like it, when 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 you say watercolor, that's exact imagery that you're getting. Yeah, yeah, like yes. Yeah. And it's just oh like there's God. a voiceover from like this um, storyteller, and it's just like these really good just art. It, it is comic booky, but in like 13th century style. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like this kind of scroll of imagery. Yeah. It's really really good. It's like um, it's like it's like um it's like the epic of Gilgamesh or something. That like, I feel like stuff, someone's yeah. telling you like a huge story. And man, like I haven't okay so cards of the table i haven't played that much of this games yet um i'm still fairly early in but i've done one of those legendary quests and holy fuck shit <laughs> like the way the way the end of those things happens it's just uh, every side quest in this game ends like the end of a fucking action move yeah it's it's nuts they also do the thing like for the for the side well every quest uh has a title card like it'll cut. Yeah. It'll be this like beautiful shot of whatever, and then Japanese script, and then English text saying whatever it is like, um, the laughing bandits. Um, yeah. And the price just, of honor. Yeah, you know, and that's his yeah, title every card. Every like, has a name. Yeah, um, it's a title card like a Japanese TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's a bunch of stuff like that. Plus, you can play the game in Japanese from the start. I did try yeah. that, but my attention span can't. Uh, like read Japanese, like read English subtitles, while like not hearing English words, and then play games. Like I just can't do that for something. Yeah. I tried it with Dragon Quest, and that still didn't work. I will They're... probably go back and play it in Japanese. I've done it in English with English subtitles because I want to get the whole story. Yeah. Um, and then I'll probably go back and play it in in Japanese, and maybe even the what's the name of it? Kurosawa mode. The Kurosawa mode. Yes, that that crazy fucking i put it i put it on for like a split second and was like holy shit yeah what right, is, so what i have is... two questions yeah um i know there's a horse in the game is that yes. tedious to ride no 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 in so, fact in fact oh, i used to ride it does them. one of the best things so you at the at the very start of the game you get to choose your horse there are three of them you can steal horses in the world if you want but this one's always with you it's like roach yeah. Um, and you get to pick one of three horses that are there. You basically just pick it based on aesthetic, and then when you pick it, you get to pick one of three names. Um, and you name the horse. Um, mm. And basically, at any point in the in your journey, at any point, you hit down on the D-pad, I think it is? Uh, it's yeah. right on the D-pad. Uh, right. left on the right D-pad. Right on the D-pad. Left on the D-pad. Whatever. Whatever. One of the D-pad buttons. You hit that button, and the horse will come to you. He just whistles, it comes to you. It doesn't just come up to you and stop. It actually, um, it will chase after you if you're running. Yeah. And the way it works is that if you're running and sprinting in the world, the, the horse will be beside you and you can actually hit the button and jump onto the horse in motion. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's, it, the horse is not tedious at all. In fact, it really does help get around the, the world with a little bit more zip. Um, to, be, to be perfectly honest, when I'm exploring, I'm using the horse. But if I just need to get from one place to another, I'm using fast travel. Yeah, because it's very quick, um, and it's like four seconds. I'm only a yeah, if that. Like yeah, it is I mean, fast on a, travel. Again, I'm on a I'm on a base, so yeah. Oh, it's a little bit longer, like, is it? A little bit longer, but honestly, I I cannot complain. Yeah, and um, then the second question about this game is, um, do you just get inundated with side quests, or is it like a healthy flow? I found it a healthy flow. I have not yeah. looked at the listing on. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Um, it appears that some of them. So far, there are, from what I can tell, there are a few different tiers of side quests. So there's the legendary side quests, which are seem to be fairly lengthy and fairly meaty, um, and end with an epic sort of thing. Um, there are the ones called the Tales of Tsushima, um, which is just sort of general side quests. That's usually pretty, like. One I've done so far, which is fairly early game, which is you ro- you you roll up on this bridge and there's a kid in the middle of the bridge and there are a bunch of bandits firing arrows at him, and you got to save the kid. Yeah, mm. really simple stuff. Um, you save the kid, mission over. Blah. That that's a side quest. Um, oh, okay. But then there's these other ones which are what are they called? Uh, I don't know what these ones are called. I, I think they I think they're called Jin's Journey. Yeah. Or something like that. They're, they're denoted by 
gold ones. Yeah. Um, and they tend to be the ones that are story quests, but some of those story quests then have like little sub quests below them where you pick up a side character and you can you can choose to you don't have to you can choose to follow their story for a little bit longer um and do other things there Uh, yeah i don't feel like i've been inundated i feel like i've got enough that there's always something to do and when i've wrapped up an area i'm like well i could just ride in that direction for a little bit longer i know there's a quest down there but if i ride Mm. in that direction i'll probably pick up two or three along the way as well so like yeah it, it doesn't feel like um i'm not looking at a wall of quests but also i'm not staring there going well what the fuck am i doing like there's always right, something to okay do. yeah um and it all feeds into like your legend meter like you don't level up like, oh, there yeah. is rpg mechanics like you have your armor and you level all that up which is cool but mm. it, you your legend grows instead which just means like you're becoming more known as spoilers eventually you become the ghost of tsushima like yeah, and that's what you build, you build towards yeah. that. Um, yeah, I always assumed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you start off <laughs> as honorable, good boy samurai, and that's what I kind of like about this game is that you start off with samurai tools, which is just your sword and your horse. So you you start off doing a lot of those standoffs where you just walk in, boom, 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 kill everyone. As you legend grows, you start earning more ghost. Uh, like gadgets, I guess, like the smoke bombs and sticky bombs and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, the more you unlock, the more ghost abilities you get. So you slowly start becoming the ghost of Tsushima, and then, like, yeah. and then the narrative backs that up. Yeah, like it's just, and I just like the way I like the way that the narrative is built in, in such a way that you, you know, it is that um, left for dead on a beach type thing. You grow and you you come back as this fucking like force of nature. That just yeah. comes to destroy everything in its path. And yeah, yeah you're right. The, the the mechanics are great of like your legend grows. So if you do one of those side quests like I did um with the with the bridge, it's like it's kind of this idea of like you did it so your your legend grows a little bit because those people saw you take out all those other bandits and so they told their villagers about like there was this guy, he came out of nowhere, he murdered these people and saved my boy. And that's how your legend grows a little bit. But then you do some of these other side quests and they're like save entire cities. And that makes your legend grow a huge amount because yeah. now an entire city is talking about the ghost of Tsushima that came and saved them from tyranny or whatever. So like mm. it, it's really logically paced in that way. Um, and I do like, I do like that there's so much on the skill tree and it definitely feels like I'm going to be able to get it all. I don't have to choose. Yeah. Um, it feels like you have to choose at the start to see where you want to sort of sit yourself as a player. But then after a while you can just be like, yeah, fuck it. I'll just do whatever. And now I have all of the powers. Awesome. Like it, I personally needed one of these games to work soon. Like I needed one of these to be like, yeah, I just want to level up, get strong and then fucking decimate everyone. Yes, please. Yeah. And it's really good at it. Like, Yeah. I think the only other thing I wanted to talk about, going back to the Kurosawa mode earlier, what it specifically does is it turns everything black and white, but it's not just a black and white filter. Like, it's got... Like, it is colour-corrected properly, like, as a something shot on film with no colour uh, would be in, like, the 20s or 30s. Uh, it's, that, it's got, like, the um, film grain and even film damage in there, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. So just, yeah... And the other thing, especially with my new surround sound system, the game sounds awesome to begin with. Like, the thunderstorms are awesome. The Holy the music shit. in this game, like, the Japanese instruments are so good. You put the Kurosawa mm. mode on, it then comes through, like, it compresses it, and then just has that, like, I guess, grainy sound to it. Like it's um, coming through a megaphone. Yeah, through, like, this old Sorry, like system. Sorry, like a gramophone. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's kind of, like you're like you're hearing it off of vinyl. It's really, really ah, oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really cool. In, but like in relation to the sound, lot, but like I'm like I really this game is so good, and even that mode is good. But I'm like I really want to see all of its colors and all of its sound. I don't want to play it in Kurosawa mode, but they put, also put so much effort into that mode that I'm like ah. I want to do both. Yeah. I want to do both because I, I want to I want to pay yeah I want to pay service to the art designers for the original game and the way it's done in colour, because it is just unbelievably gorgeous. 
like from top to bottom. Um, you go to places that are like, like, and this is one of the things that actually I was m- meaning to say when we're talking about the Xbox stuff is that like, one of the problems, the reason I liked Everwild in that thing was that everything in that conference was kind of grey and kind of realism. Ugh. Yeah. Mm. And I'm I'm tired of realism. I'm so tired of realism. I want colour. Um, yeah. And Ghost of Tsushima is that. It's just, it's vibrant. You know, there's the, the whites, the yellows, the reds, they pop, the purples. Like, all of this stuff is just so bright and beautiful and gorgeous. And when you're riding towards the sunset it's just un it's mind-boggling yeah and on on your point of sound as well the um the thunderstorm i was playing in an area where i didn't realize a thunderstorm was because i I was it's almost like i was in real life where i was standing in a direction and i was looking in one way and the, the sky was blue but behind me there were clouds and I heard a lightning strike, and it nearly shat my pants because <laughs> the thunder was so fucking loud. I was like, "What was that?" And I thought it was an actual thunderstorm. And then I turned around in the game and noticed the lightning and the and the thunder clouds rolling in. And I was like, "Oh my god, it's unbelievable! It's a really well crafted game." Yeah, if yeah. you don't like Assassin's Creed style games, though, you will not like it. like the it, it it the the open world style game is a little bit dated honestly i don't see why people complain about dated gameplay um yeah because for mine it's like well we always tout movies for going back to old cinematic styles yeah um or you know there's mario which is a game from 40 years ago now 30 40 years ago which is still touted as the best video game ever yeah and all you did was hit the a button like you moved right pressed a and that's incredible but apparently just redoing an assassin's creed game is uh, you know oh it's a bit stale it's a bit unoriginal isn't it you know i mean we did this five years ago like yeah we've been doing mario for 30 like (laughs) yeah so you know Pac-Man game yeah (laughs) Um, so, you know, like, uh, the gameplay style, sure, whatever, if it's not your jam, it's not your jam, but I would encourage everyone to at least take a look at Ghost of Tsushima, because it's gorgeous. It's really, really good, like, yeah, and they, like, also done a really good job with HDR, like, those, like, moon stuff, like, what I try to do, especially after it's rain, like, you'll have the moon come down, and then it'll reflect off the mud, and then, like, that type of lighting, I'm like, oh, this would be really good with ray tracing. But, like, even just that as is, it's just fucking gorgeous. And the photo mode in this game, I, it's really good. Like, I'm usually not a photo mode person, but the, going yeah. back to, like, how stunning this game is, just, like, I'll either be standing there pressing the share button and save a picture, or I'll maneuver everything and, like, either create filters. It is so granular. Like, you can, if you want, like, the cherry blossoms going in the wind, you can add it and how much there is. You can um, change the mm. time of day. You can change the filters. Like you can have samurai red, which just paints the whole thing red. Um, it's a photo mode built for the Instagram generation. No, it is. Yeah. And like, yeah, it is. it's about 100%. time because like it's every other photo mode, it either doesn't come at launch or it's yeah. just bare bones. And it just, I mean, really I don't good. mind. Yeah. I don't mind a photo mode that's bare bones. Neither do I. I'm not going to use fun. all those but features, they, but, like, I'm just happy that it's, all those options are there and that, like, this game is stunning enough where I'm just like, dunk, dunk, dunk. They very much have taken the time to make sure that the, the looks of this game are what are what makes it pop and tick. Yeah. Everything else is, like, second. But everything else in second is still good, so... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. That's literally it. Ghost of Tsushima is literally all I've got. Before that, I was playing Assassin's Creed 2. <laughs> Cause I needed, yeah, uh, yeah, I needed a game to sort of kill time, and even like before you the last of us. Assassinate this, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I needed time before like Assassin's Creed Two. Uh, sorry, Last of Us Part Two, and I'm just like, I need something that's chill. And I had the Ezio collection. I'm just like, cool, I'm just, like <laughs> I need something that's chill. You know, neck stabbing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like those games are like so mundane, and like it's really weird going back because it's um. Are you actually There's playing no the Ezio collection? Yeah. Yeah. There's no stealth mechanics in Wait, Assassin's Creed 2. First time and definitely not thinking, yeah, this is chill. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a game I've played and it's just ticking off marks and like the story is so like it's so meat and potatoes compared to like especially The Last of Us <laughs> going just oh, through that. I was gonna say what compared to the lost city of Atlantis that we end up in <laughs> the most recent Assassin's Creed game. Fuck. I yeah. just played that. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, even compared to Odyssey, I'm like, oh wow, this like, this is bare bones 2009 writing as fuck. Yeah. Like and like, and there was good. nothing wrong with it. It's a it good was really game. Good. Great. It's my only problem hey, with Ezio, it. You want to beat up my friends in the circle in my front yard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck my, yes, I do. My only problem with the game is that there's no stealth mechanics. Like for there a game is. Where there's not like I'm so used to stealth games now. Even like Metal Gear. Having like a crouch option or something, but like mm. you need to yeah. like go around like yeah. taking people out. You got to like hide behind like chimneys and stuff, but you're still walking. You're like this doesn't feel very stealthy. This just have this just seems to be happenstance. Yes, but the thing is, like, it's because Assassin's Creed invented the need for a stealth mechanic like that. Like, yeah, I did got the, there the with pe- like three. Yeah, yeah. You you need you need to have the like oh. Now we got to like, it's weird because Assassin's Creed is like the OG stealth game. Well, not really. We've got like Splinter Cell and shit like that. Metal Gear. It's but, the, like the mainstream. But, it went yeah, the it's into that. Yeah. Like this, Assassin's Creed is the game that even when I when I was in high school, there was still there were people who didn't play video games who were making Assassin's Creed jokes. You know, yeah. Gentle mm. blend, gentle blend, kill, kill, gentle blend. <laughs> Like, people people literally made jokes about Assassin's Creed. There were people who would never play video games on the fucking footy team at my school who would look at me and go... Oh, God. <laughs> and you're like, fucking whatever, dude. But Assassin's Creed was one that blurted into mainstream. And mm. ever since then, you've needed a stealth mechanic in your fucking open world game or whatever. But again, like, that's a Ubisoft thing. Um... Because they added it to all of their games. Like, all their games started to blur together just after Assassin's Creed 3. Hmm. That's a weird thing. But 2's fun. I like 2. 2's fun, yeah. I'm playing Brotherhood now, and... Or, when I'm not playing. Ah! Brotherhood. The last good Assassin's Creed game. Um, but the... (laughs) Fight me. The... Ma- like it is, it is the first Ubisoft game. Like two seems manageable. Like I go through just clearing stuff off the map. Brotherhood just keeps bombarding you with stuff on the map. I'm like, ah, oh, like I just unlocked Da Vinci's machine to go blow up. I'm like, Jesus fucking now. Like it is littered. Like it is, it is like, and then it's like, I feel like it's that to like then Far Cry Three is the evolution of like putting as much stuff on the map. Function. Everybody. Sorry, what was, what was that? that, Nathaniel? You're you're too far away from the mic, mic, dude. I said I remember playing um, Brotherhood and never using the Brotherhood feature. Like, never what? getting my friends to come in and fight, ever. Why? No. I remember doing it I, all the fucking time. I never did it. I was like, you motherfuckers are stealing my kill. Yeah, I'm just Stop. sending them away. Our kill. I, I, no, no, I remember leveling yeah. up the Brotherhood stuff so much that when it came to, like, the end of the, like, towards, like, big boss battles... You know, like, you would have, like, you'd have to assassinate one dude. Like, one big dude. And yeah. then there would be a bunch of little guys behind, like, in front of him that you had to, like, get through to, you know, assassinate all these little guys and then we'll kill the big one. I remember getting to a point in that game where I would hit a button and just fucking hordes of assassins would come out of nowhere, <laughs> murder all these people, and I would just walk through the chaos directly at my target. Like, and that was... I loved it. I was like, yeah, the Brotherhood's great. That's Fuck the yeah. one I feature I want in future games. Like, running up to the biggest dude, stabbing him in the neck, stealing his halberd or axe or something, and just yeeting it at fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, I got the See? platinum in Assassin's Creed 2 for the second time, so... Now I'm going to try and get it in Brotherhood, because there's no multiplayer in it, so and it seems doable. Mm. Ah, back when Assassin's Creed games were... Hey. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to fight you on that because while the game is playable for Odyssey and stuff, couldn't give a fuck. Stop taking me out of the Animus. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, the DLC does that as well. Why do I care? Back Who then, 
put me back in. <laughs> yeah, back then, I wanted both. I wanted to be in yeah. the Animus as Ezio at all times, because Ezio's a fucking baller. Yeah. And I wanted to be outside the Animus, because although Desmond's a worthless sack of shit, I wanted to know what was going on. Yeah. 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 And then they were just like, eh, yeet both of them, fuck it all. Like, we don't <laughs> care. Yeah. <sighs> And, like, it's so sad, like, going back and it's, like, they do set up for Assassin's Creed 4 or whatever to be Desmond's game. But, like, you just know that it's not. The other cool thing about, like, going back to these old games is, like, what the lore, like, lore they set up from like, the stuff you eventually see. Like, you get to see Bayek's wife, uh, Amunet, um, as a statue. Like, one of the sigils of Alpha oh, yeah. you have to collect. It's her... Yeah. Um, she's one of them. It's Darius, the first guy to have a hidden blade. He's one of the uh, things you have to find. Mm. Um, so it's like yeah. stuff like that. Um, it's got like, yeah, obviously seeds, like the first civilization stuff in there. And it does just like the other little things that are like, oh, cool. We got here through these like fucking 15,000 games that came out. This is cool. And you, you, there's, there's like three people on that team. It's like, no, let's, Get let's bring this in now. And let's three people. Like there's one okay. dude. There's one dude who's like, guys, remember, please remember. <laughs> yeah, Man. so hard on it. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Anyway. But what if Viking? Yeah. <laughs> what if? Like Viking? I said, like I said, people have been pining for the friggin' like I I don't remember. Maybe I'm wrong, because, again, I haven't been in the Assassin's Creed fandom for a while. But I don't remember Vikings being high on the list of things people wanted. Yeah. Um, I, I I remember Ancient Egypt being something people wanted. I remember that being like, oh, yeah, Ancient Egypt would be interesting. Um, ancient and Greece, kind of Japan. Coupled right. with that, Ancient Greece. But, like, feudal Japan has been the thing. Since Assassin's yeah. Creed, I'd say probably <laughs> since Revelations... Mm. Feudal Japan is the one that people wanted. They wanted to go there. Um, and they did the American Revolution. Everyone was like, oh, okay, okay thanks. fine, <laughs> uh, sure. 